Okay, uh, we're over in the Hope Morgan farm today. Um, summer market's already over, but uh, we're still picking apples. The season started on time instead of early as it's been in the past couple years. So um, we're picking Fuji. I guess they're in here picked the, for the first time today in this block. And we'll pick these three or four times to get the best fruit, best color. Um, for orientation, Katie, you might want to turn around and show the blueberries on the other side of the row, road. And over there is also uh, another trellis system with Pink Lady on it. We might stop over there. They're pretty right now. And they're about ready to harvest too, plus our gold rush. So we're going to stop at all those blocks. But uh, came over this farm before the sun set. It's not real bright right now. Um, for the first time ever, we tried using this reflective extende material. Put it down and just threw some ground on it to hold it in place so that the sun, this is the south slope, the south side of the tree run, sun hits that and reflects back up inside to get color on the fruit. Um, usually the fruit on the top has the most light exposure, gets the best color, and you have trouble getting the fruit in the bottom to color up properly. But uh, it's, it's made a difference in here, so I think they might keep playing with this stuff. Some of this fruit on the bottom tends to not color very well, but it's got wraparound red on it for Fuji, which is considered a bicolor apple. That's pretty good. Um, this strain is BC2. There's lots of different strains. Uh, if we turn around here, I can show you what happens if they don't get enough light. And if you can look down inside this tree, I'll pull this apple over down in the center. See that thing? <laughs> it has no red on whatsoever. So that's what we're trying to get away from and get some color on this fruit. Uh, it's another year. I think we're probably going to try to put it up closer to the trunk and maybe one on the other side, although the, the rows run kind of east-west. It would be better if they're north-south so they get sun exposure both morning and afternoon. As it is, we just put it on the south side, and the sun's low on the horizon this time of year, so it gets a lot of light in there and, uh, during the day. So I think that's the only lesson here. I will say this is, um, these trees now are about, I think they're about 15 years old. This training system is called an axe. Uh, or for axis, it's the trees go straight up like a flagpole. You keep replacing the limbs, cutting them out. It's got on wires. We took the bottom wire out here now. So we've got uh, two wires up in the top. Uh, these trees are dwarf, have a dwarf root. You can kind of tell, and I don't know if you can get down in here, Katie, but you can see the swelling down here in the bottom. Right there is where the uh, top and the bottom piece, the rootstock and the scion piece, are grafted together. And you can, there's many different options on what uh, rootstock to put it on to control the size of the tree. This planting has about 600 trees the acre. The one we're going to go to has about a thousand trees to the acre. Um, they grow good fruit because it gets better light exposure. Um, there are problems with it in that the establishment cost is very high. Uh, trees are expensive and you put, uh, we have irrigation here that you can see the tubing's in the orchard. You end up with oh, 15,000 or something on this system before it makes fruit. The system we're going to is even more intensive. Instead of being six feet apart, those are three and a half feet apart. And you have maybe 20,000 an acre into them before you get any return. The problem being that if you get a hailstorm, you get wiped out, it's a big loss. Uh, the, the good part is you get good fruit and you get it quick because by the third or fourth year they're in production and you got the fruit. Uh, this particular system here they told us when we did it it would be 10 years we'd want to take it out to replace the varieties with something new. Actually we like what we've got. We've been making money on it so they're still here. So these are considered old timers for this system. Uh, typical apple trees when I was a kid you keep them in 40 years. This system, 10 to 20, and probably the next system we go to also 10 to 20. So we'll go over and look at the Pink Lady. Uh, 
and then we'll go to Cash Town, we'll look at Gold Rush, and that's on a different trail of system. There's lots of systems that I've played with, lots of different ones. I find that interesting. My horticulture bone likes that. So. <laughs> okay, let's go over, take a look at the Pink Lady. Okay, we're over in Pink Lady Orchard. Um, this is this system is called a uh, tall spindle. We're trying to go grow a skinny tree. Let's in a lot of light. The limb um, is left in three years, and then you cut the limb out. So you want limb small diameter. So the second year they make spurs with fruit on, like this one. Third year they make fruit off the of side limbs, and then you take it out with a certain kind of cut that will let a new limb grow in. So these trees are three years old. They're already making a good crop. Uh, got beautiful fruit on. It's Pink Lady. Um, so it's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, to get this thing to bear early, we have used training aids. That's what these wires are. When you take a limb and make it horizontal, it wants to make fruit. So we take these things and tie it down. Um, if it goes upright, like this guy here, it wants to grow, and you can see how much growth that made on the end this year, which uh, well, some of these are more horizontal, like this guy only made well, about half as much. So we don't have lots of fruit on next year. Uh, Close pins, we also use them as training aids. You, we've taken some of these limbs and tied them fast to the wire, or put them in as the limb is emerging, like this guy, and I don't know if you can get a picture of him, but you put that in there to flatten it out as it's forming, so it makes a flat angle, and that way it's all about the oxens that are in the in the wood. When it gets like that, it gets a different message about instead of growing, it goes into fruiting, and that's the benefit of the system. You get fruit fast. Um, we have it on two different rootstocks, but anyway, this side here has a pretty good fruit crop on so we're pleased with these and about ready to harvest uh, we've walked through and gotten a couple of them soon we'll get the rest um, we seem to have an advantage in growing these late varieties because they take a long season to mature and get color if you're for instance growing apples in New York or Michigan they've got a much shorter season and may have trouble maturing these late varieties our problem is the early stuff being too hot. All the things uh, like Macintosh comes around Labor Day for us. It's hot. Honeycrisp, same thing. Hotter than apples like it. So we have more trouble with those. Our niche seems to be with these late varieties. So that's the story here. Again, we're on the other side. If you turn around just orientation again, uh, we're on the other side of that blueberry patch. Those blueberry bushes are pretty this time of year turning color and getting ready to drop their leaves. Um, the ones you see on the ends that are green are not, uh, they're rabbit eye. It's a different kind of blueberry rather than the uh, low bush. And their advantage is that they bear fruit real late. So we put a couple of them in to experiment with. Hasn't really made a lot of fruit for us. And they seem kind of seedy. The idea was if we could get blueberries in October, our customers really <laughs> like them, but it hasn't worked out too good yet. So we're going to go down to Cash Town and check that out. Um, and by the way, while we're here, I mean, all these things are of interest. If you turn around, uh, here's one on the ground. These are quince trees. Oh, this is where they are. Uh -huh. Well, oh. one of, it's one of the places they are. <laughs> okay. That was a bad one got thrown in the ground. But um, they look just very similar to apple trees. They're in the same family as apples and pears have the same internal structure. Uh, don't see much anymore. It used to be real popular, I guess, for people to make jelly out of. Okay, let's go to Cash Town and take a look at the uh, gold rush before the sun goes down. All right. Okay, we came down to Cash Town Farm. It's a different system of uh, training. Uh, actually, you maybe get an idea of that. We, we planted these trees in a line and then tilted them to make a V. And you can look down through the center of it. It gets sunlight in through the center. Uh, got posts in and these wires to support the trees. It's on dwarf root stock. And this is Gold Rush, one of the last varieties we have to pick. 
Uh, they've become really popular with our farmers markets. People wait on them, and it's a very late variety. So I think tomorrow we're going to harvest the first of them. Uh, we won't take them all. We always spot pick, take the best ones, and then come back again. But there's always problems to deal with. Um, well, let's talk about positive first. Out here in the end, we've had weather this year to blush these things, and they are really pretty when they get that color on them. There we go. Can you get it? Sort of. Yeah. Sort of? <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we got it. It's interesting. We've got to get too much. It can actually burn it and turn brown, but it's really pretty right now. You will see these black spots on it. And what that is is either codling moth or oriental fruit moth that got inside the apple and they go in and pupate and then come out and hatch out as an adult. We occasionally see where they've eaten their way out to fly away as a moth. Um, but is it one of the things we battle with as fruit growers, people don't like wormy apples. So we do a lot of pheromone disruption um, by putting twisties out in the orchards that um, give off the female moth scent so the males can't find the females and that way they don't mate they don't lay the eggs and when the eggs hatch it's the larvae that burrow right down into the apple and that's pretty successful in most places whatever reason right here we get tremendous pressure from them and we've never been successful with it so we, we do use chemicals in here in addition to um, try to control them. One of the theories is there's an abandoned apple orchard down the road and that's the source of all these codling moths that we keep having uh, come in here and hammer so on these things. When they get, after a while, it's been, it starts to decay, starts to make a rotten spot and of course that ends up getting thrown away. We don't even use them for juice if you get a rotten spot. Um, I will say this is where, you know, in January I sold the, Marie Mark and I sold the business to Sydney. Uh, this is actually where she got married, right here. <laughs> um, this row on our right on this side is the typical way to train this. On this side we had a landscape, um, Landscaper. The design, yeah. landscape design guy that wanted us to do this so he could buy the trees, dig them out, plant them as an entrance to people's gardens by taking them out and they're all over here on one side now, but you take one out and turn it around and you'd have an arbor to go up over to for an entrance. He's never taken them, <laughs> um, which is fine. We like the fruit. We like the fruit. We enjoy the fruit. And I don't know if I'd sell them to him now if he'd want to take them because it's become a real popular variety. As you can see down there, the fruit has the proper size, the proper color, uh, the crop loads right, and we're real pleased with it. You know, I wanted to show you, this is a pheromone trap. You put a sticky uh, card in there, a sticky surface on, and a little capsule that you break, and it gives off the scent of the female codling moth or oriental fruit moth, whatever you're trapping for. So they smell that and they come in looking for the female and they get stuck on the thing and you pull it out every week and count how many moths you're getting to find out when the hatch is and the moths are coming out to, uh, to mate. And um, that's why this is in here. We have them on all of our different farms, different orchards to try to monitor when we are getting a lot of pressure and need to spray in addition to our pheromone ties. Our answer in here has been all the time because we just have tremendous pressure in here. There are still peaks and flights, but we get tremendous pressure. And it's usually up here in the tops where our spray coverage isn't so good. Um, if you look right over here, here where my head is, you can see, you know, fruit isn't all perfect. Uh, they got cracks, they've got holes from the insects, and that's typical. Um, even the best of fruit you're going to go to pick 10 percent is going to get thrown on the ground because it's got defects but that's just people can't, tend to think that uh, you know you harvest it all and it, it isn't that way <laughs> what you see at market has been sorted out and we bring you the best